Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. Hey, everybody. Douglas B. from Veterans Air. Veterans Air is sponsored by Andrea Corping with United Healthcare Insurance. She is an authorized agent who will guide you through a better understanding of Medicare coverage options and Medicare plans offered from United Healthcare. A great choice for our listeners. Andrea can be reached at 281 773 6239 or visit Veterans Air online at IRLoneStar.com slash VA for more information about today's sponsor. And now, back to our show. Welcome to Veterans Air, the Veterans Hour. I am your host, Douglas B. You can listen to new episodes of, of Veterans Air the first Tuesday of every month at 1 p.m. and always catch our past episodes Tuesdays at 10 or on www.veteransair.us, Facebook Live, or YouTube. Um, Got to do some housekeeping, as I always do. If you need to get hold of us, you can text us in the studio on our Google phone at 936-344-3083. Was that loud, Dick? I just blew his eardrums off of his head. Um, uh, you can send us a text. You can send us an email. You can swing on by the website and drop us a form, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Listen, I got a really, really big show for you today. It is November 1st, and before you know it, we're going to have to do taxes. And as we do taxes, when taxes come up, I reach out to my good friend Stephen and say, Stephen, come in and talk to us about taxes. Well, you know what? You need to pay attention because this year we have a bunch of changes that is going to affect you. Last month, we talked about Medicare and Medicare Advantage plans, and we had uh, um, Angela in from United Healthcare to talk to us about that. Today, we have Stephen and his boss, Doug Thompson, in to talk from uh, ATR Tax Advisors to talk to you about what you need to know for the upcoming tax season. So without further ado, let's get into it. Stephen, Doug, welcome to the show. Thank Glad you. to have you back. Yeah. Um, so, oh, I, I wanted to thank you, personally thank you, and give a shout out to DV Tanya for taking such good care of her and working through her issues to get her squared away. Absolutely. I was, I was seriously concerned that she was going to wind up paying a bunch of money selling a house and buying a house, but you worked it out where she actually got a tax refund. That's outstanding. Right. <laughs> well, that's outstanding. No, that's actually something that we're going to cover today is those same principles that a lot of people don't know about, but we're going to cover them today. So. Outstanding. Well, we have a lot of time, so it's not going to be rushed. Um, very briefly, no, Doug, welcome to the show, your Thank first you. time guest. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I've been public accounting as a CPA since uh, a number of years. Started in 1969 with KPMG in audit. And then I started doing tax in 1971. Been doing it ever since. So it's approximately 53 years I've been doing taxes. Well, uh, ATR tax advisors, how long has that been in, in business? ATR, experience-wise, has been around decades. The entity itself is new as a practice I was involved in had been acquired by ATR. I like businesses that have been around and have the experience. Mm -hmm. Because I, I tell everyone all the time when they look at me and they go, you're too young to be that broke. You know what? <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's not the years, it's the miles. It's the experience that, that counts for stuff. Oh, he's been around since the, since the uh, Stone Ages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
he was out there, you know, hammering out the numbers on the stones. So means in the day, but. you guys are, are, are down in Houston. Now, I remember when I had you on last, mm -hmm. you had an app where people could send you the stuff, scan it in and send it I to did, you. I did, I did. Do you guys yeah. do the same thing? Yes, sir. We certainly yeah. do. Outstanding. As, as you all know, I'm a technologist. I live by technology. Sometimes it confuses the hell out of me. But uh, I like it, and I like the fact that, uh, that you can get the documentation that your clients need electronically. It saves them time and effort to go down to Houston. That's Absolutely. Great. Because for me, if I'm going down to Houston, I'm charging somebody 75 bucks. <laughs> I hate going into Houston. It's unreal. I just uh, I came back off of the road last night, and, and I-10 is a cluster. And, and it doesn't get any better if you go up 45. Mm. So I like to stay here in Conroe where I know where everything is at. Um, so, Steve, you sent me this, this, this couple of page thing here Absolutely. to talk about, talk about taxes. And as you know from working with me, I know nothing about taxes. I just, you know, take whatever you did and fill it out for the next right. year and change the numbers. <laughs> um, with the exception of the upcoming, because we're going to meet afterwards offline, and you're going to talk to me about turning mm -hmm. Veterans Air into a 501C. Absolutely. Because you're a high-speed, low-drag type of guy, <laughs> and you can do this. Um, veterans. Dependents of veterans. Heads of household. Married filing jointly. Married filing singly. Singly, is that a word? Uh, yeah, we'll call it. What the hell? It's my show, right? I mean, there's other words in the text. <laughs> <laughs> we need to, to pay attention because things are getting tight out there. Now, this morning, MSNBC told me that we are experiencing this quarter, or last quarter, the greatest growth in domestic, in gross domestic product ever. And that you the economy. Say. <laughs> say again? I said you wouldn't say. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and our economy is strong as hell, and inflation is Russian disinformation. All that being said, we need to pay attention to what we're doing tax wise, and we need to pay attention to what's coming down the pike. Because, whether you realize it or not, this is November 1st. And November 1st is important to us because, guess what? Next week, seven days from now, we're going to be standing in the voting line and voting. Now, this is a, a, a political show. If I have one party on, I have the other party on, too. And me being a great influencer on social media, because I have 43 followers, um, yeah. Impressive, isn't it? Well, you're getting up there. I'm getting up there. I had like 23 last time we were together. Um, I'm not telling you who to vote for or who not to vote for. That being said, if you're going to vote this year, and you should because that is the most sacred duty of an American citizen, let's vote for Ronald McDonald. After all, if we're going to have a clown as governor, he should at least be able to make hamburgers. So, now all my jokes are out of the way. <laughs> Let's talk about this. There's been Absolutely. changes to the standard <laughs> deduction. So what is a standard deduction? The standard deduction, it decreases the amount of income that's taxed. Now, we have several changes that are going to happen. <clears throat> What's funny is that the uh, government had came through I want to say about two weeks ago. Don't quote me on that. But they came through and said, oh, we're going to make changes because of inflation. But, I mean, in actuality, they do this every year. They change the standard deduction every year. If you go back and look at the increases, well, this is right on par with what happened the previous years. So, I mean, is it really changing because of inflation, or they just want to say that just to give them a leg up? I think it's are you the saying, latter. Are you saying politicians are... Or less than a hundred percent truthful. I find no, that I difficult. No, I wouldn't say. I mean, I wouldn't say that at all. But <laughs> I, I see. You. Oh, by the way, these these talking points 
I will make available as a PDF for you to download and peruse and read at your convenience, and you'll find the link below or above or on the sides or wherever the hell they show up. Um, looking at this, married filing jointly and surviving spouses have a standard deduction of 25900 this year. All right, it's almost right on par with 26000 but... Well, last year it was twenty five thousand one hundred dollars, so yes. you know that's a that's an eight hundred dollar increase in the standard deduction. Right, but it's not out of the norm what they've been doing from the prior years, increasing solely. Um, but this year, you're right; it is eight hundred dollars increase for married filing jointly. For single, though, it's four hundred. So. A four hundred dollar increase, bringing it up to twelve thousand nine hundred fifty for the year. Now, if we think about this, this really doesn't do all that much against inflation. Mm. No, no, it I doesn't. Mean, uh, but it's almost every... like a kick in the chin. <laughs> That's a very polite way to do that. Uh, I, I like that. Um, but it's better than nothing. I had a right. question it looking at looking at this chart. So, 65 or older or blind, married filing jointly, QW. What's QW? Q qualified widow. Widow. Qualified so, widow. Yep. Or married filing um, separately, the deduction is fourteen hundred dollars. What the heck? I'm, am I reading that correctly? That's uh, an additional fourteen. Oh, oh, on top oh. Of. Because you know. So, and that's if you're over the age of sixty-five or you're blind. Um, I should. I'll go back and re-edit this later, and maybe you can upload that. I can so upload that it doesn't anything. confuse. Oh, just because anybody. I'm confused doesn't mean mm -hmm. you know everybody else. So is if confused. you take that and you say, okay, well, you're over the age of sixty-five. Or you're blind and your filing status is married filing joint, qualified widow, or married filing separately. Well, then it'll be the twenty-five. It'll be the twenty-five nine plus the fourteen hundred. So it's getting up there. It's it, it's getting up there. Right. Um, there are a number of people um, because this isn't just for veterans. This is for everyone. Right. And there are a number of households out there that need this standard deduction. They, they need it. I agree. Um, and this becomes important. And as you age, it becomes even more important. Well, yeah, I mean, your income goes down. <laughs> mm, or, or, yeah, it's it, on a fixed income. Right. Those of us exactly. on a fixed income. Um, Doug, I'll throw this next one to you. All right. Charitable contributions. So the government has so far disallowed the $300 or $600 married filing jointly without itemizing deduction. You can still take, still take charity deductions if itemizing. What does that mean? What, what type of change is that? In the last two years, if you took the standard deduction... You didn't have enough to itemize. In order to itemize your real estate taxes, sales taxes, charitable deduction, mortgage interest, have to exceed the standard deduction before you would even consider itemizing. Now, this $300 and $600 that's spoken of here in this outline, it's no longer allowed as part of or in addition to the standard deduction. So you take the standard deduction, or you itemize. If you itemize, you're going to exceed the standard deduction, which part of the itemize would be charitable deductions. So, hypothetical. This year, um, Veterans Air, we did a lot of donations. We donated to Tunnel to Towers. We made two significant donations to the Montgomery County Food Bank. So in order to take those charitable donations off of our taxes, we have to itemize and figure what our itemized deductions will be. And if they are greater than the standard deduction, then we itemize. 
Correct. If they're not, then we don't itemize. Correct. I'm going to throw this one so. to, to, to Steve, my, my tax guy. Do, 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 do I have enough deductions to itemize? I don't think you do. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's it's been that way for a number of years. They've been increasing the standard deduction, trying to get rid of the itemization that happens. Um, they've been trying to do that, gosh, how long ago? <laughs> well, in uh, 2018... <laughs> started in 2019 mm -hmm. when you we lost the exemptions so you had a husband you had a wife and you had children they're all entitled to a deduction for exemption they did away with that thus they increased the standard deduction considerably but if you had a family of three children husband and wife three children you were losing you lost a greater exemption deduction to get a lesser standard deduction as an off trade I got, a, I got a friend of mine, Joe, has seven dependents, and he complains about that all the time. Yeah, should. Mm -hmm. All the time. Um, yeah, they're really kicking you in the shin, not once, but twice here. <laughs> I, 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 I said, you had Going fun on at least round. seven times, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, look, they're getting rid of that 300 and 600 deduction. Well, now, shoot, if you got enough, not enough to itemize... You're missing out. Mm -hmm. So it's going to hurt. Well, I think of it this way, and, and, and most of the veterans that, that I know of that, that do charitable donations, um, they don't do it so they can take a tax rate off. See, and that's they, true. They just do it. Absolutely. Um, they say, you know, it's part of what I do as a veteran, keep giving back as much as mm -hmm. I can. So that's great. Oh, and do, you, you guys got to check out Tough Texans Tough. United for Texans United for Freedom, I believe it is. You got to check out Tough. I went to their gala um, yeah. two, three months ago. Was it good? It was outstanding. It really, really was. And uh, they were selling this little teddy bear for like twenty bucks, twenty buck donation. Oh, okay. And I asked them, I said, "Well, what do you do with these teddy bears?" And they said, well, we give them to police officers and EMTs. And when they come across a child that's in a bad situation, a bad way, um, they give them one of these teddy bears. And I went, okay, let me have $200 worth of right. these things. Um, <laughs> see, my, my, my wife does the same thing. Um, is, uh, she makes uh, crocheted critters. And one of the, the critters that she makes are minions. And there's this CASA lawyer that has a standing order for a dozen minions as soon as she can make them. Whenever she finishes calling them up, he comes up, picks them up, and he gives every single one of the CASA kids a minion. So they have something of theirs mm -hmm. when they go from place to place to place. That's what I mean about veterans and charitable giving. Mm -hmm. They don't look at the cost, they just look to fill a need. Amen. I agree um, with you on that, <clears throat> absolutely. Student loan forgiveness. I want to say this personally about student loan forgiveness. I paid back my student loans. Yes, I'm a veteran. Yes, I had student loans. I'm paying off my daughter's student loans. This whole student loan thing leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Well, you, did you catch what Biden said the other day? No. No, he didn't. He I, didn't hear about it. I've all? been on the road for ten days. Oh, Talk to me. Oh my goodness. So he was. <laughs> He was on air, and he was talking, and he said, oh, by the way, that bill had passed by two votes, the student loan forgiveness stuff. I was sitting there thinking, well, what do you mean? It wasn't even a law. I mean, how? <laughs> do you, do you miss? Oh, man. I was sitting there. That was an executive order. That wasn't, that didn't go through Congress or the House or anything. That was solely his department. But... <laughs> I'm going to have to do a show on, on this because some people are confused about what this means. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean that if you have a student loan from ABC Bank that it's forgiven. No, 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 no. no. Wow. What are they ta they're talking about here is they're talking about your Stafford loans. Yep. And they're talking about your Pell grants. Well, it's a grant. You don't owe it back to begin with. 
Um, so a lot of people are confused over that. So I'm going to have to do yeah. a whole show. But who wants there to take this? There is a lot this? of confusion. Who wants to take this, this about the student loans? Um, I mean, I can go on it. Go ahead. Okay. So, you know, back a few months ago, Biden had decided, oh, well, he was going <laughs> to, in one, one fell swoop, uh, forgive some student loans that was sitting out there. Um, now, I'm in the same boat as you, Doug. Whenever, <laughs> whenever I'm sitting there thinking, well, okay, well, I have student loans, you know, that pay on this and that. And, uh, but one executive action, he's going to wipe out student loans. I thought that took an act of Congress mm -hmm. in order to pass something that well, you know, affected the budget. By definition, you're absolutely right. By definition, so, if it's budgetary, <clears throat> Congress controls it. Right. But, you know, the Constitution is changing daily. Apparently so. <laughs> Apparently so. But, but. Right before our eyes, too. The, the, um, the, there is a there is a, a stay of execution, if you will. Um, uh, a district court has said, "No, wait, you can't do this. We're, we're just going to put this on hold for right now." Right. <laughs> I, so think, I think the that's rhetoric where, is just I the think, rhetoric. I think that's where it's going to end too. It's going to be on hold for all this long, and before you know it, people are going to forget about it, and then all of a sudden you you see this one little headline that uh, it's went away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and you can't help but to think that's a political thing. But let's talk about the tax side of things. Now, so far, the administration, they've come forward and they said, well, well, we're not going to issue a 1099-C. And by the way, for those of you that do not know, a 1099-C is a cancellation of debt form that you ha would hand out in the, in the place and action of where debt is canceled because you recognize it as income to you, the individual. So, but so far the U.S. government on a federal level has said, well, we're not going to issue those so far. Now what they say and what they do are two separate things. I mean, history shows that. Um, but some states have come out and said, well, shoot, even if they don't issue 1099C, guess what? That's still taxable in our state because you don't forget we have federal taxes and we have state taxes, right? Um, so, and the reason why I bring this up is, well, well, Texas, great state of Texas, don't necessarily have a state income tax. We still have, we still pay taxes on property, but that's another subject for another day. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> so, in the last legislative session, they, they passed an amendment to the Texas Constitution that says no income tax. So we're, we're not going to have income tax in the state of Texas. That's great for everybody that's in Texas, but as we know, this show is far-reaching. Right. I go across state lines and mm -hmm. you know, internationally. Yes. Hey, Stefan, how you doing out there? Um, so this is important. Um, and I see Minnesota on here, and our dear friend, Sailor Jerry, she's from Minnesota. She has student debt. Yeah. So she's going, that, that student debt, that student loans that she took out, she has to pay income tax on those in the state of Minnesota. In the state of Minnesota, they've come out swinging, saying that, well, if they issue this, this is still counts as income in that state. So therefore, they're going to tax you on it. They're going to hit you up against the side of the head <laughs> with the tax bill. And you're going to be sitting there wondering, oh, well. Everybody in the I mean, the it's state. a double head short. They might be looking at, well, at least it's forgiven, but I got to pay this tax bill. Um, Everybody in the state of but, North Carolina, Indiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and, of course, California. Of course, California. <laughs> your student loans are income. Even if the federal government and the circuit courts decide, okay, you know, Biden can do this, he can forgive student loans, your state's income tax for these states here, you're going to have to pay that as income. So when they're doing their taxes, 
they're doing their federal taxes, and then they do state taxes. And it's been a while since I've done state tax. Um, I got to Texas in 97, so yeah, it's been a it's while. it's been a hot moment. Yeah, it, it, it has been. Um, but I remember doing it. Um, I lie. I've never done my state tax. I've never done any of my taxes. My father was a CPA. Mm. And what I would do, so when this happens to you, just so you know that there's precedence to this, I would take all my receipts and I would save them for the entire year. And then I'd put them in a shopping bag, a big brown bag. And sometime around March or so, I'd go see my dad and I'd, I'd hand him the shopping bag and I'd tell him how much money I needed back from my tax refund. And then he would curse for, you know, a couple of weeks as he was doing my, my taxes. But he always found some way to get me back what I needed. So when I come with the shopping bag to y'all, just know that it's, it's a family tradition. You gonna shake it up first? Oh, hell yeah. Wow. They're, they're, they're in no particular order. Yeah, I mean, they're crippled shakes. up. Oh yeah, oh, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, I, I do that to this day. I, I save all my receipts mm. and, and I put them in a shopping bag and I stick them on top of my father's urn. And then I come back on April 15th, which is my father's birthday, and open up the bag to see if my taxes are done. And they're still not. It's like, <laughs> dude, I have your ashes. <laughs> I'll have to shake them for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so you keep messing with me, Dad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put your ashes and mix them in with mom's. <laughs> then where will you be? Um, so, so but, the, what's the bottom line in student loans is it's not a law yet. Mm -hmm. And, by the way, it's also the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals put that temporary hold on it. So far, I haven't seen anything that suggests that they're going to release that anytime soon. Um, <laughs> so, I, I, once again, I find that humorous. I, um, I, what's that, quid every, pro quo? Pre, quid, <laughs> quid pro quo. Um, <laughs> My daughter got really excited when, when, this, when this happened, when they said they're going to yeah. forgive student loans. And I said, honey, that doesn't help you at all. Mm -hmm. We've already paid back all of your Stafford loans. Your Pell Grants are just that grants. You don't pay back a grant. It's income, but not here in the state of Texas. Oh. oh. <laughs> um, and, and, and so all of your, your bank student loans, you still have to pay those back. Right. Which, of course, mm -hmm. his daddy has to pay those back. And, by the way, let's not forget inflation. They, they say that, oh, it's, you know, it's only, what, 8%? 8, 8 is what, what they're saying? But, 8 .6%. I mean, in reality, we all know that to be a sham. <laughs> did, um. you, did you know? <laughs> did, here's, a, here's a did you know. Did you know? Doug probably knew this. Here's a did you know. That you get a student loan from ABC Bank. And when you got the student loan, the interest was 3%. Since the federal government, since the Fed, has raised interest rates, you need to check your contract on that loan because your interest rates on those loans mm -hmm. may also have gone up. Yes, there is a bank, a large bank, mm -hmm. that has just done that. I can't say who they are, but they have a stagecoach. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I really am not. Um, I I would say I could be shocked, but no. Uh, I'm I'm not. Shocked. Um, I'm not either. The way the things are flowing right now, and it just keeps the outlook just keeps on getting worse. Um, let's let's talk about a a, a but, section of the population here. Mm. Um. Educators. Yes. Now, there are a lot of teachers, a lot of educators that are veterans themselves. Yeah. I'm one of them. I substitute teach. Um, I don't do it very often because, let's be, let's be truthful here. Who really wants me teaching their kids? <laughs> just, just saying. Um, but there's a, there's oh, a you're lot. you a good teacher. I'm sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am an excellent teacher. There, uh, there are a lot of, of veterans that are teachers. Yeah. And we know that 
the teachers union aside, that teachers are a, for the most part, a hard working bunch. We all can remember that one teacher that profoundly changed our life. That one educator that we can look back on and go, he or she was great, or he or she was really bad. Um, for me, it's Coach O'Leary. He was my uh, English teacher. And he, he profoundly changed my life and, and instilled in me the love of reading, the love of a good story. Mm. He was an excellent teacher. So talk to us about these teachers. Sure. <clears throat> so, you know, I really think that this should be more. Uh, it hasn't changed in a few years. It hasn't. But, and it's a shame because, you know, these teachers, a lot of them, they go out their way, they buy supplies, um, for their classrooms, they do this and that, but yet at the end of the day, I mean, pay the 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 amount of financial strain that puts on them. I'm I'm just really amazed that they stay at it. They're really dedicated. They have to be. Um, they, you have to love what you do to be, be doing it. I believe because here, I mean, this hasn't changed. If you're a teacher. Right, and you're in the school system. You're allowed to deduct 300 if you're single, 600 if both of the individuals married are educators. So, and the reason why I bring that up is that while that may not be much, I'd rather take it than nothing. Um, at the end of the day, you want to keep Uncle Sam from running off with your money and not the other way around. I mean, if someone stole money from me, I, <laughs> I'd be chasing them down. Oh, Would you agree? I mean... I would. And, and you know the old saying, death and taxes are the two things you're never going to get rid of? Right. And, and taxes are a necessary evil. We have to have taxes to do the things that we need to do as a society. Um... For example, who would say no to buying lunch for a kid that's hungry in school? Nobody would say no to that. Right. Of course, it's 35 cents, you know, buy him lunch. Um, who would say no to, to fixing the bridge? On a, a, a couple of months back, the bridge over the San Jacinto um, was in disrepair, and DOT came in and they put a patch on it. Taxes pay for that. These things Absolutely. are necessary. Um, but there's a lot of programs that, that the average taxpayer may not want to support, but he has to. Looking at teachers, um, and, and this, this, this irks me somewhat. When my daughter was in school here in Conroe ISD, yeah. paid Conroe ISD school tax, which went up every single year, and then we'd get a list of all the supplies that she had to come to school with. Provide. Provide, and they gave it to the classroom, and the classroom teacher passed us out and mm -hmm. whatnot. And I'm going, what am I paying taxes for? Um, and then when I started subbing, I realized just how much a teacher goes into their pocket for uh, supplies and things. And that's it's, it's, it's unreal. My uncle, Uncle Bob, um, hey, Uncle Bob. He's a DJ up in Oswego, New York. Um, check him out. Triple R Music. I can do shout outs like that. Can I? Can I? Dick is saying it's too late now. He already did it. Um, <clears throat> uh, he's been a, an educator for decades. Um, goes into his pocket because yeah. kids need it. Um, so I like this. I like that that's there. Um, but should it we should. <laughs> should be more in my opinion mm -hmm. um, should be way more uh, uh, they don't get enough support as it is but you think 300 600 bucks I mean, well you know I, it really is I think it was last and, year even in today's economy it's not enough last year the the Conor ISD came out with another bond that they wanted uh, more money more millions and millions of dollars yeah um, 
And some of the things on there was just like stupid. $3,000 to paint a red stripe on a curb that was 30 feet long. Um, they wanted X millions of dollars to afro to mm -hmm. the stadium. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. How about putting some money into art? How about put some money into science? Um, bring back shop. I was a shop kid. Yeah. Well, shoot, that's a lost. <laughs> that's a lost art now. <laughs> that that, that uh, is. And the, you know, these things are. I sick remember having a shop too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I took both wood and metal shop. And I, had, I had no aptitude for it, none whatsoever. But it's you're shaking your head. You were a shop I took kid. Him also. That's right. Yeah. yeah you were you were in the era where 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 marksmanship was actually taught at school. Yep. Yep. See how much we've changed. Yeah, gone out those days. <laughs> um, here's a big one, especially mm -hmm. for veterans: foreign earned income exclusions. For the tax year of 2022, the foreign earned income exclusion is $112,000. That's up from $108,700 for the previous tax year. Mm -hmm. What is foreign earned income? Doug, you want to touch on that? No, go ahead. <laughs> I ain't touching this. What are you, crazy? No, I'll take it. Uh, foreign earned income is somebody's working out of this country. They're required to work and not come back Two years, and they, they can come back a little bit, but very, very little bit. And if they do that, the income they earned abroad is not taxable in the U.S. So the amount of money they can earn in 2022 that may be excluded from U.S. income tax is $112,000. This raises a question. So... Which, by the way, it doesn't apply to. Um, doesn't apply to active duty. You know, of course, that income still kind of has been generated in the U.S. So, unfortunately. Now, I remember during during uh, uh, the last war that mm -hmm. a portion of that was not taxable. That was passed by Congress. That wasn't. But uh, that aside, um, so we have. People deployed in foreign countries in the U.S. military that are married and the wife may be working or the husband may be working and they're filing married jointly. How does that affect the situation? So, well, deployed is a totally different situation. It really is because, I mean, you, you're active duty at the time. So, and you're serving in a... Now, we are talking about combat zone, right? When you're talking about deployed or you're just talking about... about Korea, Germany, If it's Italy. a combat zone, you know... Um, yeah, during the war, that's different. Yeah, it's but, different. You know, we, we, we serve overseas, in overseas bases. Wow. Um, and and I'll, I'll, give you for, I'll give you an example. For example, um, I was in Korea, and the set my second tour, my wife came mm -hmm. over. Um, I was lucky the first tour I was at the DMZ, but my second tour I was in Seoul, Korea, in Yongsan. Cushy, cushy assignment. Um, at night, I DJed at the local club. My wife was working, you know, in the economy. That is covered under this foreign earned income exclusion. So the funds, the, the, the revenue that she generated mm -hmm. from working overseas even though I was stationed there, it's working overseas, that has an exclusion of up to $112,000. Is that, is that correct? Potentially, yes. So, I mean, if she's not, if she, let's say, in that situation that you just brought up, right, your dependent at the time is out there working for an un-income exclusion, in which case that would potentially apply. Now, every situation is different, but in that situation, it could. You heard it here first. Every situation is different. And I'm looking at you, Michael, because you're at that age where you're about to find some, some woman overseas and get married. 
You need to be paying attention to this. And if you have any questions, they oh. should call you at? Should call us. What's your phone number? What is it 281? 281-299-3400. Outstanding. 281-299-3400. Now, see, we were talking on the phone about our gardens and yes. how this year our garden did absolutely diddly squat and how much money Ooh. we had invested in our gardens and how much Same. more money we're going to have to spend to have somebody come cut down the trees that are dead because of this drought. You know, I think I, think I got, I want to say, two, three tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got. You got I guess, two more than me because I got one. I guess I got five jalapenos this year, <laughs> so <laughs> it I, wasn't much of a harvest. <laughs> I mean, every everything grew and everything flowered, but mm, you know, nothing yeah. set fruit because of the drought and the, and the excessive heat and everything. I mean, unfortunately, that this next topic doesn't exactly apply to that because this applies more standpoint standpoint of farmers. And ranchers in the course of business. And and there's but, a lot of them. This is Texas. Yes. I mean, the home of the steak. Everybody thinks it's, you know, it's Kansas City is the home of the steak. No, no, no. They just have really good barbecue up there. Um, Texas. I mean, you can't throw a stick in the air without hitting a cow. <laughs> this, is, this is Texas. Um, right, which is why I think this next section is, next section is huge for... Um, the ranchers and the farmers out there um, who have livestock. And, you know, the drought this <coughs> past year, it's been pretty bad. Um, I've seen quite a few businesses being hurt from it. Um, you know, in the course of doing their financials, you can tell that it's having an effect, even the cost of goods, uh, Fertilizer. Increase, mm -hmm. Yeah, fertilizer, the cost of things going up, it's eating into their profits. Um, so I was surprised that they came out with this and they had issued this notice that this was changing not too long ago. Uh, and I believe that they're going to update it whenever, but I mean, it's been very terrible. You've seen the, uh, have you seen pictures of the, Miss the Mississippi River mm -hmm. over there? It's dry. I've never seen that, ever. I, I was talking to a friend who has a uh, has a cabin out on uh, the Mississippi in Missouri, I think it is, and yep. uh, she was saying it's never been that low. I've never ever seen it. been that low. They, they've never seen it. And they've had their cabin for generations. So it, you know, you gotta wonder what what effect that's gonna have on the economy too. It's gonna have a huge effect on the economy. Food um, prices and everything's gonna go up. Watch next year, it's gonna be. I think it's even going to be even worse for the tax. Oh, base. I'm sure of it. And and so it says this year, the drought has been a very big issue for the state of Texas and the surrounding areas. Farmers and ranchers forced to sell livestock because of drought conditions may have more time to replace their livestock and defer tax on any gains from those forced sales. Right. Now, forced sales is important, right? <clears throat> it's very important wording here because they're not talking about well, you go out just to sell a cow for the gains. They're talking about, well, you, you haven't been forced to sell the cattle or the livestock because of drought conditions. So that is very important. Now, I was down in the valley <clears throat> for the past 10 days, yeah. and, and I, I talked to some ranchers down there, and I said, what do you mean forced sale? He says, look, I used to run... 2,000 head of cattle here. Never had a problem. I have a problem now feeding them. I have a problem yes. watering them. All of my watering ponds mm -hmm. are all dried up. So he has to import that water. Think how much that's going to cost. Mm -hmm. and so and he has no choice but to sell. No choice but to sell just to keep his head above the water. Yep. He Otherwise, he's going up. down and his oh, cattle is right. going down right with him. That's right. And <clears throat> there are a lot of... I hate to use this, this these, these words, but there's no other way for me to explain it. Pocket farms or gentleman ranches out there. Tiffin Ranch. Um, 
we have an agricultural exemption for 22 acres. Yeah. We used to run livestock. We were ranchers. We're veterans. So this is potentially very important to our listeners. Yes, and it's very helpful because you can defer the gains, and they're saying up to four years, up to four years to replace. That, that, that's, a, so. that's, a, that's a long time for a rancher. It, yeah. it is. If you are out there and you are a rancher, you are a farmer, you have that agricultural exemption on your property and you're actually working it, you really, really want to call Doug or Steve here and talk to them about this. Because this is potentially money that you're leaving on the table. Now, I got five minutes? I have 45 minutes? We're at the 45-minute mark. Oh, at the 45-minute mark. Um, we're going to go a little longer, and we'll break this into two sessions. Um, this is important. You need to pay attention to this, and you need to call Doug or Steve to figure out how this affects you. Absolutely. So. The, the standard mileage rate, I see, has, has increased. It has. And the Veterans Administration, I hope, is paying attention to this. <laughs> because if you, you are 50% or more and you're traveling to your VA appointment, you could get travel pay. I want to read this as you wrote it. Sure. The business standard mileage rate from January 1, 2022 to June 30th, 2022 is 58.5 cents per business mile. The business standard mileage rate from July 1, 2022 to December 31st, 2022 is 62.5 cents per business mile. This is really, really huge, and here's why. Mm -hmm. Here's why this is important to you. If you're a business person, you run your own business, as I do, hopefully you're smart enough to keep a mileage log. <laughs> um, you see, my dad did teach me something. <laughs> hey, um, you... <laughs> At least he departed with you. That's At right. least that, that doesn't mean that I do it, but yeah, I know that I should. Um, that you keep the mileage log because that mileage log, when you talk to these fine gentlemen and they ask for it, they ask for it for a very specific reason. And mm. why are you asking for it? Well, I'm asking for it to determine your deduction. How much can we write off of your income? Make that less taxing on you. That's right. The money that you're spending is tax deductible if you do it right. And you should do it mm -hmm. right. Yep. Now, I, I, I'm not sure exactly how they're going <laughs> to, the IRS is going to track this. Because a lot of people, they don't, they don't listen to it about keeping the mileage log. But um, I would suggest everybody keeps a mileage log. Um, because at the end of the day, if you ever get pulled up for an audit, and the IRS asks for it, you would be like, here you go. <laughs> Instead of sweating bullets, wondering, well, shoot, how am I going to track this? <laughs> there are apps upon apps upon apps mm. that you can download that will track your business mileage for you. Absolutely. Just saving your gas receipts <clears throat> is not it. This mileage could potentially be a bunch of money that you're leaving there on the table. So I was out for 10 days doing for my day job. And I put two, four, six, a little over 900 miles on my car. That was all business. Yeah. That's a bunch of money at 62 cents. Yeah, it is. You know what? What is that? That's about, it's over 500. Don't ask me. I only can count to 10 because I'm wearing shoes. <laughs> we we'll just call it 500 bucks, you'll leave it. Yeah, on the table. it's 500 bucks. I might be able to itemize. No, I can't, but EMW can. 10.99 for work. Take the 10.99s to a Schedule C and keep track of expenses related to the work to ensure you're not taxed on your gross income, but only on net income. What does that mean? Doug, you want to take that one? Yeah. 
The government receives information returns called 1099s from people you may do services for. So they know the revenue. Obviously, you want to reduce your taxes as much as you can get by with. As a self-employed individual, you pay self-employment tax at 15.3%, and in addition to whatever tax margin you fall in. So let's say our 1099C summed to $20,000. We have no expenses. So on 20000 net profit, I'm going to pay self-employment tax. I'm going to pay income tax on whatever margin I'm in. If I can come up with legitimate deductions, it reduces that net income subject to self-employment tax and income tax. Mileage is one of them. It's going to be one of the more significant deductions. Another deduction you can offset against that gross income. If you use a computer in business, you use your internet, you use your telephone, you use the telephone. So it's important to keep up with any expenses you think are related to that business to reduce that net income subject to self-employment tax and income tax. And I'm here to tell you that that is significant. Amen. As a businessman, um, as a consultant, 90% of what I do is 1099. But to make that money on the 1099, I expend a bunch more money to be able to do that. Absolutely. And, and there's a lot of deductions that you can take being self-employed. Mileage is just one of them. Um, for example, I got to keep my certifications up. I, I constantly have to do CEs or relicense for this thing or the other thing. That's tax deductible also. Businessmen, in individuals that are employed are self-employed. And that is, that is a lot of people. The small business person is the, the, the power in this country. Yeah. They leave a lot of money sitting there on the table. Capital gains section 121 Exclusion for sales of property. Hello, Tanya. Yes. This is this is for you, Doug. Take us through this briefly. All right. So a lot of people, a lot of people don't realize that you can potentially have a capital gain exclusion on the sale of your primary residence. Um, now, whenever I say that, if you're single, the max exclusion that you could have was 250,000. If you was married found joint, it would be 500,000. Now that's a lot of money that you could exclude from the capital gain. So let's say you have a home that you sold at 600,000, but the home had cost you 100,000. So you have a potential capital gain of 500,000 sitting right there. But if you're married, following joint, you could use that exclusion and that cell would be subjected to zero tax. And I want you all to keep in mind out there because buying and selling properties are, is becoming very common. I receive calls every day, do you want to sell your home? There's a lot that goes into selling a home and a lot of cost that goes in with selling the home because you always have to perform an upgrade of some sort. You always have to, to replace the AC, update the bathrooms, whatever that mm -hmm. cost may be, be, may be. So I encourage you out there that if you've sold a home or you've purchased a home this year, talk to the experts. Talk to these guys. They helped out DV Tanya. They can help you out. Uh, I mean, shoot, that's a big saving grace. That 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 is a huge even grace. <coughs> even if um, you know with that, you have to be living at your primary residence for two years in order for that to qualify. But even if you don't hit that two-year mark, there's still the partial exclusion, which. I, w I really do want to cover that partial exclusion because on top of the main exclusion, people aren't aware of the partial. 
and that could be for work-related, health-related reasons, and foreseeable events. Now, unforeseeable events, it's loosely written by the IRS. So, <laughs> um, talk to us because in these situations, you could be entitled to a partial exclusion. All right? I want to ask you both a question since I have you here into the spotlight. Um, I've been using Stephen here now um, as my, my go-to answer guy for everything. And he never sends me a bill. Can people call you and ask for your opinion? They can call us, yes. Are you going to send them a bill? Um, <laughs> sometimes we do, but... If you're a high net worth individual and you have several situations going on, that eats up a lot of our time. So within reason, we're reasonable. You heard it here first, within reason. They work the same way I do. I'll take your call. If I know the answer off the top of my head, I ain't gonna charge you anything. If you make me have to work, I'm gonna charge you. Free rental income. Minimum rental use. There is a special rule if you use a dwelling unit as a residence and rent it for fewer than 15 days. In this case, don't report any rental income and don't deduct any expenses as rental expenses. What? All right, free money. <laughs> but it says 15 it days. Well, yeah, fewer than 15 days. So, really so you're really not days, renting anything. Two weeks of income. So you think if you're taking a trip on vacation, you're going to leave your house, you know, rent it out for those two weeks. That's what I just think. Because that income is not so, taxable. So, so you're talking like uh, doing an Airbnb type of thing. Right, like, let it, my, I'm going out, <laughs> I'm going over to see my, my in-laws. I'm going to be gone for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Airbnb is going to put somebody in there for two weeks. I'm good. I'm golden. That's not income. Exactly. And that pays for your vacation. It does. Wouldn't you like a it, it spot does. out there in the coast on a cruise ship? All paid for by someone else. <laughs> I, I, I'm never going to go on a cruise. Never, ever going to go on a cruise. No? You don't like no. cruises? No. My wife doesn't like cruises, so I'm never going on a cruise. Fishing? You know, a man can fish only so long before he has to use dynamite. <laughs> Just saying is all. Wow. Um, this is me, business owners with children. <clears throat> you can pay your child your <clears throat> you can pay your children a wage up to twelve thousand nine hundred and fifty tax free dollars, and it works as a deduction, lowering your business taxable income. Only works for single member LLCs, not for corporations, but there are workarounds. If you have children between the ages of seven and twenty-two, you can use this strategy to save money. I wish I had known that. A lot of people, a lot of people leave that on the table. I don't understand why. Because we uh, don't know. <laughs> well, uh, that's exactly it. You know, the tax law, you think about it, it's pretty outrageous. Um, it's very thick. <laughs> I should know because I've been in the books now for over a year going page by page through it. Oh, but, um, that's right. You're standing to be a tax lawyer, aren't you? I'm trying to get there, yeah. Dang. It's the main goal. Being the tax court, tax court practitioner is what I'm going after. You Air Force guys are so smart. Yes, I actually said that. Let's do something for the veterans here. VA income, yeah. non-taxable. If you receive retirement from the Department of Defense, then it is taxable income. Yes. Why? So, <laughs> this is one of few, few, I guess, few of life's great mysteries here is why they did this. But Because to me, if you think about it, I, I would think that it wouldn't be subjected to tax, but it is. Um, but the VA income, and this is important because I repeat myself constantly every single year, especially to um, some veteran friends of mine who are saying, well, do we have this VA income as, as our income for taxes? No, it's non-taxable. 
Don't, no, you, don't. Still have to, you still have to report it, but it's not taxable. It's not taxable. Does not go on your 1040. <clears throat> and and so, how does the government report VA income, and how does the government report Department of Defense income? What well, form? the Department of Defense they put, report it on a 10 uh, 1099 R. R. So, um, anyways, <clears throat> if you receive it from the Department of Defense, and you you issued a 1099 R, that is taxable. You do have to report that. That goes on your 1040, and it is subjected to tax. So, I, I repeat that every year: VA income non-taxable, Department of Defense. You have a 1099 R. It is taxable. And, and there's a, a plethora of individuals out there that fall into that category. Um, Brother Johnny, D.V. Hawk, for your for you listeners. Um, and Johnny, I hope you're feeling better. Actually, I'm very glad that you are feeling better. John went in for a, a heart test and came out having an emergency triple bypass. Um, John collects VA disability. Yeah. And he collects his DOD retirement, and when he retires in a number of years, he's going to collect his retirement for the, for his, as being a GS employee. <clears throat> Depending on what state you're in also makes a difference. The VA disability income is not taxable, and I believe it's not taxable as income on state income taxes also. Retirements, however, retirements, whether that be a DOD retirement, whether that be a GS retirement, or whether it be other types of retirement, railroad, they are taxable as income. And, and it can get confusing, and you can potentially leave a lot of tax deductions on the table, which equal out to a less amount of taxable income unless you know what you're doing. Now, I have a degree as a business management with, with, with IT. That doesn't mean that I know how to do anything. All it means is I know who to hire that does know those <laughs> things. Um, and, and, and I encourage you all, veterans listening to the sound of my voice, I encourage you to get the opinion of a tax professional. A lot of us that are just, you know, existing on our, our disability, yeah, it's a 1040, it's easy, it's done. Those of us that, that have investments, that are still working, have retirement, you need to have a tax professional. You really do. Um, you bring up the, the Texas Veterans Land Board Program. And I am 100% behind this program um, because... And Joe, I know you're listening. Check out the Veteran Land Board. This helps veterans purchase properties, purchase houses in the state of Texas. Right. God bless Texas. God bless Texas. It helps <clears throat> veterans in Texas purchase land up to $150,000 with 5% payment down. Joe, you're looking for a house with land? Veteran Land Board. To be eligible for the VLB, veterans and military members must be at least 18 years of age. A bona fide legal resident of Texas on the date of application and meet one of these following criteria: An active duty military member, a member of the Texas National Guard, a reserve component military member having completed 20 qualifying years of retirement. A veteran having served at least 90 active days duty unless discharged sooner due to a service-connected disability and not discharged dishonorably. A surviving spouse of a veteran listed as missing in action or whose death was service-connected. That is a bunch of veterans. Yeah, <clears throat> it applies to a lot of them. Um, but yet this isn't very well known about. <clears throat> and so 
I've added this on here. It doesn't apply necessarily to um, the tax side of the house, but it's it's a good thing for veterans to know. Well, not directly, but we talked about buying and selling a home. That buying and selling a home could be could be part of this Texas veteran well, land yes, board, it could. and it is is very applicable. Um, I know the people over there um, at the Texas oh, Veteran Landboard. Yes, I do. Wow. Yes, work closely with them. Um, good bunch of guys out there and gals. Um, very hardworking to be able to do this. Um, and those veterans that understand this program, it's very profitable for them. Yes. Those that don't go, gee, I wish I knew. Because veterans, as you know, you got out and you go, well, you know, I'm just going to go get a, 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 a VA loan, right? A VA <laughs> loan is not a loan. <laughs> right. Um, and there's conditions and so much that you have to have down for your VA loan and also. Mm -hmm. Texas Veterans Land Board is different. It's different than a VA loan. Yes. It's one of the benefits you have <clears throat> for living here in the state of Texas. Social Security disability income and SSA income um, could be taxable, or it is taxable. Oh, it could be. Could be subjected to tax. So. Explain that, could be subjected to tax. Um, so there is a formula that you have to use. And I would say consult with us because there's different things that could go into it that could make it taxable. So um, this is really something I don't really want to go in too heavily about because it might confuse people. But give us a call. The biggest mistake that you can make is that they're thinking, well, this isn't taxable. Because then if you ever come up for audit, they're going to hit you up on the side of the head. You're like, why haven't you followed this for the past 10 years? And, and how long can they go back and do an audit on your tax returns? Oh, that really depends. Well, the failure um, to report income, it's indefinite. Yeah. If you've got income you haven't reported, it's open, that return, even if it's many, many years. If you never filed, they could go back however long they want to. Um, potentially hit you up the side of the head with tax evasion. My well. nephews, and you know who you are, <clears throat> file your taxes. Um, we did not talk about tax brackets mm -hmm. or IRA brackets or Roth brackets for your retirements, and most of us have those. Right. So I've added the links on there. So if, if you're interested, you want to go see it, just go out to the PDF, click the link, it'll bring it right up for you. And, and definitely call these guys. Your number again is? 281-299-3400. And, and they, they will help you out as they helped me out. And they helped out DV Tanya. And you'll be getting Brother Johnny when he finally retires and moves down to Texas. It, oh. it, it, <laughs> it's going to happen. Um, mm. I talked to him after his surgery. He said yeah. he's had enough. Enough of the cold weather. When he retires, he's coming down here four years. Tell him to see us. Four years. And we'll be taking over the entire state by then. <laughs> Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for talking to, yeah. our, to our veterans and helping clarify some confusion out there and things that we don't normally think about when we're doing our taxes. Nobody likes to pay taxes. Nobody does. If there's somebody out there, if there's a veteran out there that enjoys paying taxes, come see me. You need <laughs> counseling. Um, You're going to do it for free, huh? The free counseling. I'll do the free counseling on that part. Um, but it, 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 it is necessary. Um, again, I want you to check the links above or below or on the sides or wherever they show up because I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm gonna put the information for you to download because you need to read what we've been reading. And uh, do you want me to put this out also? I mean, it could be confusion. It's pretty busy. Yeah, I looked yeah. at it. I didn't know what the hell you were trying yeah. to tell um, me here. No, we didn't have time to touch on it, so we'll save so, that for yeah, next year. We're, we're not going to do that. Yep. Um, I'm going to tap you right now. If the student loan thing goes through, 
Mm. I'm going to have you come back on and talk about how the student loan forgiveness is going to affect <laughs> your bottom line. Because yep. there's going to be confusion over that. Oh, there's going to be a lot of confusion over it. Mm. There already is. There is. It's when, we'll when, they came, when they came back with the, with the Pell Grants and they go, mm -hmm. but I don't pay back Pell Grants. Oh, but wait. See, your Pell Grant affects your credit. And they go, it affects my credit? Yes, it affects your credit. So if they forgive that, if they give you a 1099C and they list that, that Pell Grant as being forgiven, guess what that does to your credit score? Mm -hmm. Raises it up because mm -hmm. it comes off as paid. Yep. If, if it's on there, if you have a Pell Grant now, it's not on your credit report. It's not. But if they give you a 1099C, it will be. I'll just wait to see what it does to inflation, too. Oof. They shouldn't give a 1099C for the Pell Grants. I know. When I heard that on the radio, I went. But, you know, these are, this, this is our government that we voted for. Voting for, um, this comes out on the 1st. What's the date? The 1st yeah, the first November. Mm -hmm. The 8th of November is the very last day that you can vote. The very last day. I expect to see those lines full with my fellow veterans out there doing the most sacred duty that an American citizen can do. You've been watching Veterans Air. I want to thank you for your appreciation and your time. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us. You could be the 44th follower of this show. And until next month, stay safe and stay vigilant. Medicare can be confusing, but it doesn't have to be. My name is Andrea Corpany, and I am an agent authorized to offer AARP Medicare plans from United Healthcare Insurance Company. I would be happy to help you better understand Medicare, your coverage options, and discover what may make AARP Medicare plans from United Healthcare a great choice for you. Call me, Andrea Corpany, today at 281-773-6239 so you can decide on a plan with confidence. That's 281-773-6239.